Hello and welcome to Discover Discus Gems for Literacy Treasure Hunts. I'm Linda Heimberger, the Electronic Resources Training and Outreach Coordinator with the South Carolina State Library Discus Office. In this session, we're focusing on engaging students in the discovery of discus resources. To that end, the Trod and True Treasure Hunt Scavenger Hunt is still an excellent tool to engage students in their self-discovery of databases and resources or to partner with a group or work in the classroom. There are four session handouts uh, that you can locate on the scassel.net recordings document for the conference that we will be referring to during this session and one of them is how to link content from Discus resources and the other three are different types of scavenger hunts slash treasure hunts as you see pictured here. If you'd like to pause the video and go out and find those uh, to follow along uh, you're welcome of course to do that. So I will conduct demos around these pre-made hunts and then we'll look at additional resources for literacy themes. I will first mention some tips on creating your scavenger hunts. You always want to make sure you test your links to see how they function on your campus, mobile device, etc. Always provide discus login bookmarks um, when you can or a handout in case the student is prompted for a login once they click a link. And Make sure that you make your answer keys as you go along. Create that key, maybe open a second document to fill it in as you go. That will just streamline things and make it easier for you. As we cut away to our demos, allow me to encourage you to respond to our survey. This slide will be shown again at the conclusion of the session. Uh, this survey is not the conference survey, but this one is for our Discus Federal Reporting. So we hope you'll be able to respond uh, at the end of the session. So let's jump in and look at our first uh, scavenger hunt here that I've pulled up. This one is actually the mystery person scavenger hunt. And this one is, is really focusing on helping the student to get exposed to Pebble Go Next biographies and also uh, to be able to learn a little bit about the author Beverly Cleary. But the fun part is the student will get the, the name of a mystery person to explore in the second half of this hunt. Notice at the beginning the first oh, four or five, I uh, suppose four, of the uh, directions, the step-by-steps, um, this is something you want to think about when you're creating your uh, hunts because sometimes you're wanting the student to actually know the step-by-steps and learn how to access you know through Discus or through your LMS or however you want to tailor it and sometimes you want them to just be able to jump right in and click on an item so you'll see that you do have the the ability to omit those first three if that's what you want to do but um, always think about what your main goal is for your student to to be able to navigate and to be able to search or if you've already gone over in the library or the classroom about uh, how to get there you can just omit those. So we're looking here first of all uh, to learn more about the writer Beverly Cleary and we have the step-by-steps to get into the scdiscus.org and then once they are there, they can enter the name Beverly Cleary into the search window, or they can just click on Beverly Cleary there, as you see. I'm going to go ahead and click on Beverly Cleary and just open up the link. This is uh, Pebble Go Next is one of our newest um, excellent resources that we just acquired along with Pebble Go um, Animals. And this one is very seamless in the linking, and I highly recommend it for that purpose. Notice there are tabs all across the top that you can help uh, the students begin to explore and create in the hunt there. There are also uh, some wonderful pieces at the bottom that are helpful uh, for you to incorporate into your hunt. Uh, the timeline, the, the video piece, uh, any activities. These are especially great when you're in Pebble Go 
animals because many of the activities have different animals that you can label the parts of their body um, and, and other interactive pieces. But now that we're here, we're able to see who is Beverly Cleary and we can continue uh, to view our, our various questions that we now have for our student. So I'm just going to go down, uh, back down to the, the file here and show you what we've done. How many books did Beverly Cleary write? Find out and click on the tab labeled first book. So that's something you can tell them or you can say, choose the best tab for if you want them to do a little more thinking on their own. How many years did she spend writing her first book? Click the timeline button at the bottom. That's one that I pointed out to you. And what did Beverly Cleary celebrate on April 12th, 2020? 2020. Many of you probably know it was our 104th birthday was the answer to that. But number 11 here I've added close out of the timeline using the yellow button there. And now we're breaking down into the mystery person piece. So we've exposed them to where things are located on that screen. And now uh, we've said good job. Next you'll find a mystery person to learn about. To find your mystery person click to spin the random article wheel at the top of Pebble Go Next. So we can go right back in uh, to show you that, uh, that piece. When the wheel stops spinning, write down the name of your mystery person. Number three, have you heard of this person before? Uh, this kind of gets into something where you can have conversations about prior knowledge and um, engage your students if they're in a classroom setting. In what year was your mystery person born? Look for the early life tab and get information. What's your mystery person known for? And which button at the bottom of the page will help us cite the source of our information? So we're just going to pop back into our Beverly Cleary page. And you can then see that all of those are readily avail available for them to be able to answer those questions and then also to learn about how they would cite their source. So the easiest part about this, I'm just going to click the yellow X at the top here to get us uh, out to exit out of the site piece. The wonderful thing about this within Pebble Go Next and Pebble Go is all you need to do to, to link to this Beverly Cleary article as I did is click on the copy link on the article that you're looking at. You copy that link and you're able to hyperlink it in your document. So once you do that, the students will not only have access to the article you want them to refer to, but also all of these great tools. So you don't have to go back in and out trying to access the tools. So the second part is the random article. And this is the little wheel that we mentioned there in the handout. The student just clicks the wheel. They're able to see that Buffalo Soldiers are the, the topic that they're going to be writing about. You know, they're asked, did they, did they hear of these Buffalo Soldiers before? Um, again, you can engage them about whether they know anything about it. Um, and then they can continue to work through some of the tabs that are available there uh, for them to get early background information, et cetera, uh, for that piece of their learning about their mystery person. And we'll just spin it again here. We have Tina Thompson. She was a basketball player. So that's how you would link to those. And I'm also going to um, actually go back home here to show you quickly. Um, I have another treasure hunt that was actually based on Britannica's uh, animal database. And if you want to update something, you could easily go into animals there, um, update, locate a habitat, locate an animal, and then you would use the same permalink to be able to link to that type of article. So let's go ahead and move down to our next treasure hunt example here. And we're going to go into the discover a book and its author hunt here. This one is geared toward uh, more of a, a parent guided activity or a librarian teacher guided activity. And this one um, um, is actually going to have the student uh, access the tumble books book, the dot, and access something from teaching books. 
So there are so many great resources in both of these. Um, but this one is guided for either the classroom or for a parent to assist their, their child. Has someone ever asked you to try to do something new, but you did not think you could do it? Maybe ride a bike, draw a picture. Did you feel frustrated? Today, we'll read a storybook and meet a little girl who felt just like that. Let's find out what she does. So the next steps would be what the, the parent would guide the student through to get to the tumble books and to be able to pull up the book, the dot, and then um, click the play video link and, and actually listen to the story, have it be uh, read aloud. And then we have questions, what does this story teach us about? Share out loud with the class or parent. Name something you would like to learn to do that you've never done before. How do you think the author of the dot got his idea to write this book? So as you can see, this is a little bit more engaging. It's not so much answering specific birthdays and that kind of thing, but this is giving the, the um, child or the student the, the uh, opportunity to really think about what they've read and to think and, and kind of move to some more critical thinking here. Then the Let's Meet the Author, Peter H. Reynolds and Find Out. This is where we now link to Meet the Author, which is uh, going to open into teaching books for the parent and the child to be able to uh, watch and listen. I say, listen closely. What does the author say the book is about? And what happened in the author's life that gave him the idea to write the dot? And the final question, if you were writing a story, what event in your life would you write a story about? So when we click on the Meet the Author link here, we're just going to go out back into the teaching books and you can see that we've linked to the Meet the Author recording and we're just going to click on uh, the play button here. Hi, this is Peter H. Reynolds and I'm author and illustrator of The Dot. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how that book came to be, and then I'll share a page spread with you. I love to write and draw every day. In fact, I keep a journal handy at all times. And so he's actually giving a, a little background on his book, uh, how, it, how the idea came to be, and uh, these are the, the pieces that would then flow right into the questions that we'd asked in, in, our, in our little piece there. I want to go back and show you now, since we're already here, I'm going to show you. I'm clicking on the dot so we can get to that page's primary uh, list of resources. In your handout that I've given you on linking, it will show you how to locate the book that you're looking for, or the title that you're looking for, and all of the resources that are available in teaching books. And Kim Davick will be uh, providing an entire uh, virtual session on this for the SCASO conference, so don't miss that one. But you'll see here uh, that once you get on the page, there is a share this page, um, a share this page that will al allow you to link to this, this page with everything on it, or you can do as I did and just click on the meet the author recording and then share this page. So that's how you can link specific um, pieces that you want, whether they're the videos or the one of the um, read aloud uh, read alouds for the books, or any of the resources that go along with that particular title, there in in uh, teaching books. So you can see that, especially um, if you're working virtually or if you're you know wanting to add something, maybe that it is more of a take home kind of piece that the student would be able to. Uh, access these very, very easily here. So while we're still in here, I'm going to go up to the For Educators section there. Just going to move my face out of the way um, for educators and show you uh, within this, um, the For Educators, there are library programs, book lists, uh, book promotions, diverse book lists, um, just a, a, a lot of great information that you have access to as an ed educator. Um, some of these things you might want to get the link and actually share them back to your teachers or to uh, some of your content area coordinators at your school as well. 
I'm going to take one jump back back to our dot and show you whenever you click on the share this is the link that you'll get just a very simple link almost um, almost like a, a truncated little link so you're not going to have to deal with the big long awkward link which is also a blessing you can copy it to your clipboard and then do whatever you need to to add it to uh, add it to a handout add it to a little bibliography maybe an electronic bibliography for your library etc so that's another great thing you can do with it as well so I'm going to go ahead and pause for a moment here. I'm going to go back down to our other handouts and just pull up that discus content leaking one for you. So you can see that um, I've, I've actually posted these in alphabetical order. So the credo reference ones are going to lend themselves more to the sixth graders, seventh graders, eighth graders for the most part. But um, I do also have linking instructions for Gale in context. Uh, showing you how to get the Git link for a topic page, a magazine, etc. Uh, the Learn 360 is now they've actually simplified uh, working with the links there. And when you are in the Discus uh, account there with the Learn 360 district, and I'll show you that in a moment, uh, it's very easy to create those links. This is the Pebble Go one that um, and it's great it, you know you're able to attend this session today if you have faculty or teachers that you want to just push this this uh, PDF file out to you're welcome to do that to share this as well and then the teaching books gives you an example of um, how to locate the title click the red share um, arrows and what what links the uh, the user would be able to see there as well and I do remind everyone once again to to make sure that you do provide that discus login I always provide the printed discus login bookmark uh, or sheet uh, for reference just in case uh, certainly you can post it inside a learning management system or behind a wall where uh, the student or user has to authenticate uh, you just wouldn't want to post that uh, username and password obviously out on the web or on a document that will be posted out to the web there as you see. So let's go ahead and move along uh, to the last little demo that I have for my scavenger hunts. This is one that I actually did uh, a couple of years ago. I updated it. Um, I still get feedback that, that kids like doing it. Um, but this one does need a little help because there aren't really any interesting kind of linkings there so there might be a case I wanted to show you this one because you may actually have scavenger hunts that you just want to simply update and not maybe start from scratch but notice here this one was a help Lucy find her favorite animal complete the scavenger hunt below and uh, this was primarily uh, using Animal Kingdom from Britannica but you can see here that at the end of it the reason we had all of these blanks along the left uh, for each answer is write down the first letter of each of your answers from above starting at number one and they just went down one two three four five until they spelled out the word giraffe then that was Lucy's favorite animal so what we could do today is we could go back into uh, pebble go animals and have you know some great links there we could actually link out to the, with the bonus question we could link out to the giraffe and they could quickly find out whether or not giraffes eat grass. Um, so you can um, actually go in and just go ahead and add hyperlinks to some of your uh, previous hunts as well. So let's go ahead and um, I'm going to go back now and go into uh, Learn 360. I'm just going to jump back here, go into Learn 360. I'm changing this to InfoBase here something you all already know about. Um, the reason I want to do Learn360 is I did mention that the linking there now is very easy and we do want to cover some of the other types of literacies. Um, for one, if I wanted to add a, a crocodile video to, uh, to my animal search one there, notice when you pull up the video there if you've already just looked at it and decide you would like to link out to it you just click click on share here and now instead of having all of those embed 
well, they still have an embed link, but instead of having to do the record URL and, and bother with all that, you can just copy the link. You see that it's copied there in the center, and then you can paste that link into your document. Just make a hyperlink there. Uh, and, th and that does uh, open up very seamlessly also. In addition, if we look at some of our other literacies, uh, such as uh, ELA, maybe uh, reading, I'm going to just quickly search on reading here while we're in Learn360. And you can filter these out however you will in order to get down uh, to what you're looking for there. But if you want to uh, look at a particular video, all of those are going to uh, now have the share properties for you to be able to link those. But I also wanted to point out uh, so a couple of other things as well. So when we go into uh, the reading results at the top, we have the mailbox here. We have, of course, the videos that we mentioned. We have printables here. We have images and games and activities. And I wanted you to notice the games and activities because there are some wonderful reading activities for grades two to five in here. And we're just going to pull this up. Uh, so that you can see those and you can see Crazy Horse Reading Comprehension, the United States, Penguins, Sand Dollar. So there are other things that you could actually link to in a hunt that would actually give them even more interaction there as well. And notice when I click on share, I still have the copy link. So that makes it so much easier for you, whether it's a video or a printable. Um, again, there are also the, the pieces here for STEM lessons uh, that might be appropriate with reading tables and graphs, writing functions. These are all different STEM kinds of lessons uh, there that you are able to link out to as well. So I'm going to go ahead and close down uh, uh, Learn360. And if we want to go back one step, go one step to demonstrate uh, from our A to Z resources, once again here, uh, I'm just going to go back and uh, find all of our Gale databases. Those that link, uh, the permalinks in Gale actually work with all of the Gale products that we have. So uh, it's wonderful up and down the grade level chain, the topics, etc that are there. If I go into Gale and Context Elementary here, as you see, and if I want to uh, look up my famous crocodiles here, for instance, I pull this, I can actually use the permalink, the git link at the top right, uh, to be able to link out to this article and ask questions there. So if I click on re uh, keep reading, you can see there's some excellent little vocabulary words and information about that crocodile in addition to what we found in other databases. And I would just click the get link there in order to be able to copy and hyperlink that material. And you're able to hyperlink within the documents. You're able to hy hyperlink not only the overviews, uh, but you can also hyperlink uh, the articles that have images uh, or have other links as well to access those. So that is uh, kind of the, the linking piece. We've kind of gone a little heavy on that. But I also wanted to get back and down to my slides. We'll just go back into the slide, uh, the slide piece here and show you some other wonderful resources. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. But notice all of these fun books here for, from Tumble Math. Um, 31 books in the Finance tab on, uh, in Tumble Math. Ella earns her money. Kyle keeps track of cash. Big bucks. So this is something that's really great, especially with uh, some of the new standards that are requiring financial literacy, even for the little bitty ones. Um, Galen Context Elementary also have articles and overviews on money, banking, loans. Learn360 is another great resource, once again, for that. World Almanac for Kids Intermediate has some excellent resources for those tweens that are just beginning to learn more about wanting to save money and buy things and, and get jobs and 
do those kinds of things. So those are some great um, gems that you want to take a good look at. The data literacy, we have a lot of uh, things on reading maps, learning about different types of maps and legends and everything from latitude and longitude to other things as well. Uh, also printables and STEM lessons there in Learn360. And of course, culture grams also allow students to be exposed to data literacy um, just by uh, comparing country data within the uh, culture grams kids and culture grams world editions there. And then I definitely want to pop back into our ELA. We mentioned it a minute ago um, and we'll get to that one in just a second, but the media literacy is also available for your younger K through eight students. And um, I wanted to point out that there's an entire series in Learn360 that's very new called My World Media Literacy Series. There are 11 videos there. There are also uh, in the topics section of World Almanac for Kids Intermediate, you're going to find Take a Stand, is fake news a problem for society? And uh, finally, the opposing viewpoints on media bias um, for your older students who have, um, you, you know, seventh, eighth grade level where they, they are not just learning to learn about taking a stand on those. So for the ELA literacy, again, I wanted to mention, we did uh, talk about uh, tumble books, or we talked about tumble math, tumble books, teaching books, have book lists, teaching ideas, literacy standards, lessons, puzzles, videos, you name it, to support different book titles. And then notice as well the uh, Learn360 that we mentioned before, the games and activities, and the mailbox printable resources. You're also able to link out to the Weston Wood storybooks, which give you some of those classics um, like Goldilocks and Danny and the Dinosaur and, and Corduroy. So that's another uh, great gem that you want to take a look at there. So we're going to go ahead now. If you have any questions about this session, I know it's it's a video recording version, but you are welcome to contact me at any time, and many of you do, and I appreciate hearing from you. Uh, you're welcome to email me there or to uh, call me, and I'll be glad to, to assist or clarify or show you additional information. Also, please remember to contact our Discus Office for other issues as well. Desiree Thomas with the Discus Office Help Desk here. Um, if you have any technical questions, if you just want to submit a success story, perhaps you've had a great uh, feedback from a parent about your student their student using tutor.com or you've done an excellent lesson in the library that really got kids on fire and you want to share that with us uh, please do just drop us a line at the discus office there um, and certainly contact patricia sinclair our director of our department if you have uh, any feedback you would like to give for new resources uh, or existing resources if you have any uh, questions about any of the training the uh, technical piece. Um, she kind of fields all the questions there um, if, if, you, if you would like to contact her as well. So this is finally the Discus Training Feedback Survey. I'm just going to pause here for a moment. If you'd like to scan that QR code uh, or go out to that, uh, add that, uh, uh, the link there to your browser and, and give us your feedback. We truly appreciate what what you give us, uh, what you let us know. We've been able to uh, really uh, come up with uh, more trainings and just more ability to, to assist you uh, really statewide just on sometimes the tips of one or two of you. So certainly stay in contact with us. Thank you so much for joining us today and we hope that you enjoy uh, the rest of your conference.